Energy often feels like magic because its ability to transform and influence the world around us in seemingly mysterious ways. Woodman here, here with another segment, and I want to talk to you about how energy is the new magic, right? It's the modern day form of what people have traditionally considered magic for centuries. Energy is often invisible to the naked eye, which can give it a mystical quality. We can't see it directly, but we can observe its effects, much like the unseen forces in many magical tales. Energy can also transform from one form to another, right? You know, energy or mass is neither created nor destroyed, right? It can just be changed into another form. This ability to change and adapt can seem magical, especially when it results in unexpected outcomes. Think of how energy can power devices or how chemical energy in food fuels our bodies, right? What about the manifestation of power? Energy is a fundamental aspect of power. Whether it's the explosive force of a bomb or the gentle warmth of sunlight, energy can exert tremendous influence over the world. This power to create change mirrors the abilities that we have traditionally associated with magic. What about how we can control and manipulate that energy? Humans have learned to harness and manipulate various forms of energy to serve our needs. This control over energy can feel akin to wielding magical powers as it allows us to perform tasks that would have seemed impossible in the past, right? We remember the Wizard of Oz and the wonderful feats that he was able to accomplish in the movie. What about natural forces? Uh, many natural phenomena such as lightning, earthquakes, and the growth of plants are driven by energy. The awe-inspiring and sometimes unpredictable nature of these forces can evoke a sense of magic and wonder. Hmm. Especially if you're at the window, it's raining, and you feel that crackle of lightning, right? And thunder. Quantum mystery. At the quantum level, energy behaves in ways that can seem counterintuitive and even magical. Concepts like quantum entanglement and superposition challenge our understanding of reality, blurring the lines between science and mysticism. In essence, the enchantment of energy lies in its fundamental role in shaping the universe and its often mysterious and often unpredictable behaviors. It's this combination of power, transformation, and invisibility that imbues energy with a sense of magic. For centuries, we've thought of things as magic, what we now would consider more to be energy. And sometimes what we realize is that we may exaggerate what magic truly is, right? It's all about the illusion. But nonetheless, that doesn't mean energy can't accomplish tremendous and great things, particularly within us, right? If you've ever sat and you've just kind of quieted your mind and you've focused and you've meditated and you've concentrated, maybe you strike certain poses, you feel tingling through your body. You feel almost like a crackling of energy spreading over your head, your shoulders, your arms, your legs, your feet, your, your, your midsection, your torso, your solar plexus, your abdomen, even going down into your loins, even going into your back, up and down your back, and into the small of your back towards the sacral area. You know, all of that, you can feel that energy flowing and the specific things and techniques you can use to really, really get in tune with that and understand what's going on there. So let's cover that in some of the upcoming slides. Yoga incorporates various techniques for controlling breath, heartbeat, and the flow of chi, right, or prana in yoga philosophy. Here's a breakdown of some common practices. Pranayama, breath control. Pranayama techniques involve controlling the breath to regulate the flow of prana or vital energy in the body. Techniques often include ujjayi breath. This involves breathing in and out through the nose while constricting the back of the throat. And in this way, this creates sort of like a gentle oceanic sound. This technique enhances um, concentration 
and it, it, it can actually be very calming for the mind when you think about it. Um, and these, these, these techniques, you know, really can help get you in tune. Another one is called Nadi Shodhana, right? Which is alternate nostril breathing, which I've actually just tried not too long ago. And it's actually very fascinating. It involves breathing through alternate nostrils. It balances the flow of energy in the body. And it kind of promotes like a certain sense of mental clarity, which you wouldn't even know until you've actually tried it. And I do really suggest you try it. Kapala Bhati which is like a skull shining breath, right? This is going to involve some rapid and forceful exhalations, which are then followed by passive inhalations. It energizes the body and it clears the mind. Brahmari, right, which is known as bee breath. This involves producing like a humming sound, right? You know, it's like, mm, you know, like, you know, and you're exhaling through the throat. This induces a sense of calmness and relaxation. Sometimes you really have to get into that, that, that certain sense, that sereneness, right? What about heart re heartbeat regulation? So although yoga doesn't directly control the heartbeat, certain practices can indirectly influence heart rate variability and overall cardiovascular health. Practices such as yoga asanas, or poses, uh, meditation, and relaxation techniques can help reduce stress and anxiety, which in turn can lead to a more balanced heart rate. What about the flow of chi itself, prana? Yoga postures, breath control, and meditation in their own way, aim to balance the flow of prana through the body's energy channels, which are known as nadis. What about asanas? Certain yoga poses are believed to stimulate or unblock specific energy channels, promoting the free flow of prana. And that's very important. That's something that you want to do. You want to, you want to kind of, if you have blockages, you want to get rid of those. If you want to stimulate, you know, you really need to get those things flowing, right? And, and this can really help you in that respect. What about meditation? Well, by focusing the mind and withdrawing attention from external distractions, right? That's what quiet, quieting the mind. Meditation can help direct and balance the flow of prana, which is very important. What about visualization? This is a great part of things, right? Practitioners may use visualization techniques during meditation to guide prana to specific areas of the body where it's needed most. What about mindfulness and awareness? Central to all these techniques is mindfulness and awareness. And you really, if you, you take nothing away, take that away at least, right? By cultivating a heightened sense of awareness, Practitioners can observe the subtle fluctuations in breath, heartbeat, and energy flow, and they can then learn to regulate them consciously. Overall, yoga offers a real holistic approach to self-awareness as well as well-being, incorporating physical postures, breath control, and meditation to harmonize the body, mind, and spirit, and thereby influencing the breath, heartbeat, and flow of chi. So now, what I really also talk to you about are, uh, as a parallel, Chinese techniques. Chinese meditation techniques, often associated with practices like Qigong and Tai Chi, focus on cultivating inner harmony, balancing energy flow, as Qi, right, and promoting overall well-being. While there are numerous variations, here are some common techniques for controlling breath, heart rate, and concentration. First off, we have Qigong breath breathing techniques, right? Natural breathing, which is known as Ziran Husi. Similar to mindfulness meditation, this technique uh, involves observing the natural rhythm of the breath, but without attempting to control it. Practitioners here are going to focus on the sensations of inhalation as well as exhalation. 
and this is promoting relaxation as well as mental clarity. Next would be deep abdominal breathing, right? Which is Dan Tien Hu Chi. This emphasizes deep diaphragmatic breathing, where the abdomen expands on inhalation and contracts on exhalation. This technique will increase oxygenation, which can then also reduce stress, so particularly perhaps oxidative stress, right? And help regulate the autonomic nervous system, potentially influencing the heart rate. Now we've got reverse abdominal breathing, which is Ni Wan Hu Chi. This involves drawing the abdomen in on inhalation and pushing it out on exhalation. This technique is believed to enhance the flow of Chi and stimulate energy circulation throughout the body. What about mindfulness and concentration? Well, single pointed concentration is known as Swan Su Hu Yi. Practitioners focus their attention on a single point, such as the breath, a visual object, or a specific body sensation. By continuously redirecting the attention to this focal point, practitioners cultivate concentration and mental clarity. This allows them to reduce distractions and promote relaxation. What about body scan meditation, which is known as Shen Ti Chai Yun? This involves systematically scanning the body from head to toe, observing sensations without judgment. This technique promotes awareness of bodily tensions, and it also encourages relaxation, which is a good thing, right? Because then you can also potentially influence the heart rate, and you could additionally promote overall well-being. Once again, it's all about being in control of the body, but in a very relaxing way that helps you to come to better center yourself, right? Ground yourself. Mind-body coordination and movement. Tai Chi and Qigong, right? So these movements are practices that are slow, deliberate, and these deliberate movements coordinated with some sort of awareness of breath. By synchronizing movement with breath, practitioners cultivate, uh, cultivate, cultivate mindfulness, enhance energy flow, and promote relaxation. Over time, these practices can help regulate heart rate, and they can also improve cardiovascular health. What about visualization in the context of energy cultivation? This would be known as, uh, this part is known as guided imagery, right, which is Chang Chang Hu Dong, right? This involves visualizing specific images, and, and I apologize if I'm butchering the Chinese, I really apologize, um, to promote relaxation, focus, and inner harmony. Practitioners may visualize scenes of natural beauty, peaceful environments, or the circulation of qi within the body, facilitating relaxation and mental clarity. Energy ball, and no, we're not talking about Sun Goku and his Kamehameha. We're talking about Qi Kyu Gong, right? Which is visualizing and manipulating an imaginary ball of energy between the hands. By cultivating awareness of energy flow, as well as intention, practitioners are enhancing concentration, they're regulating breath, and they're promoting relaxation. These techniques will emphasize the integration of breath, movement, and mindfulness to cultivate inner harmony, regulate physiological processes, and enhance overall well-being. Through regular practice, individuals can develop greater self-awareness, resilience to stress, and a deeper connection with their internal energy, which is their chi. So I hope that this talk today that we've had was able to give you a, an introduction, right? This is obviously not a, a, a show and tell technique. I'm not sitting here telling you how to do this. You, you probably will need to look out for your own videos to show you with actual practitioners who are good at this stuff how these techniques are done and you can then learn and watch observe and practice 
until you get good at them yourself. Because I know I'm on my path to learn them, and I'm obviously far from being any kind of master of any way. But nonetheless, I hope this introductory information has been extremely helpful to you as we look at how energy has become the new normal for magic and how even though it's not spectacular you're not going to be gandalf striking your staff down and talking about nothing shall pass or you know whatever you know that he does casting fireballs making trees grow to amazing heights whatever magic you've seen on the big movie screen in real life it's a lot more subtle but still it doesn't make it any less powerful it's just that you have to reimagine the impact based on the things that you can do because really and truly there are things as, as almost as great as getting people to agree with your position right sometimes you can use this type of energy to become more charismatic you can use this type of energy to be more productive you can use this type of energy to to truly organize yourself take control of your life and do amazing and wonderful things things that would be the equivalent of magic so i hope this has been helpful for you this is woodman here uh, signing off on this segment, please like, share, and subscribe. Please um, continue to support this channel so I can bring you more content. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. I love you. Bye.